video of social, mobile, local, cloud, or analytics. You know, I'm going to talk to you about the underlying plumbing that runs all of this, the network. You know, the central office, which is the core of the network. So this started in Hurricane Sandy in 2012, when we lost one of our largest and most important central offices, the one on Broad Street in downtown Manhattan. And so, one of the biggest banks in the world, the largest law firms, one of the biggest corporations, we completely lost the whole central office. We also lost most of the access network, and we had to rebuild it. And that network is probably 100 years old, and we said we had two options. Either we build it to evade was to copper, or we go for all fiber. And at that time, it was the most unheard of thing. How can you have a central office without any copper in it? We actually did it. That was the first thing we did where we transformed the whole network from copper to fiber. So just imagine a whole central office, the whole area, does not have an ounce of copper in it. It's a completely fiber network. And in that process, we created new revenues because we were able to bring fiber to new premises, a new cost model, and I'll talk a little bit about that, and truly transform the network. This wasn't network evolution, this one wasn't network you know, incrementalism, this was true network transformation. The RISC approach, uh, we've done this seven times now. That's the good news, we have 2,000 more to work, so a you know, long way. Job security for me at least. Uh, the first way we go about this is we complete the fiber build out in the wire centers. Now, so we have FIOS, which is uh, you know, the world's largest uh, fiber deployment, almost 20 million homes. Uh, and we, there are some areas, even in our FIOS markets, who use just copper. So you know, we try to get them on fiber, but they still love their copper. So we run two parallel networks. I mean, this is the 11th year of FIOS, and we still run two parallel networks. So our first opportunity here is to build out the fiber. There are some premises that still don't have fiber, we build it out. Second, we migrate the sums. Very complicated, I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Then we shut down the copper network. Probably the most difficult thing to do. Because they are always at the grand, one grandmother who still wants the pass line. You know, there's one fire station that still uses the old pass line. For that one line, you have to keep the whole network up and running in that wire center. So very important to shut it down. And then last is, you know, we create a growing fiber business with very, very healthy margins. I mean, the economics of fiber only are fascinating, and you can see that. And at the end of the day, the customer wins because the service levels, the the amount of uh, you know, MPPR, mean-time transmission is so low, the fault rate is so low, it's a win-win for everyone. Let me make a case for network transformation. This has never been done before. I think we are the only carrier in the world. If there's anyone here, let me know. I have three million questions to ask you. Uh, we are the only carrier in the world that have made an attempt to do this. As I said, we've done this seven times. We have a lot more to go. The first one is real estate. You know, we have around 15 million square feet of central office real estate today. You know, we think 60-80% of that we don't need. Now, where do you get these savings from? We don't need the class 5 switches you know, that go to 200, 300 bags. We don't need the underlying frames, you know, the upper frames that take up two or three floors. We don't need a lot of the DLC equipment which you know, primarily serves our copper. Remember back in 2000, everyone wanted three lines in the house, one for fax, one for the home line, and one for the you know, internet data. So, now we put in a lot of PLC equipment, so take that out. We can literally save 60 to 80 percent. You see that in you know, the centers we run. We go from 13 floors down to one floor, maybe two floors in some cases. So, phenomenal savings in HVAC. But what happens is when you go to this, you also pay less property tax. So, the savings are kind of flows through. Second is dispatches. Nothing rocket science was saying fiber is more reliable than copper. Typically, it's 80 to 90 percent more reliable on the outside front. One is a new network; it's less kind of let get damaged by water. 70 to 80 to 90 percent, depending on the topology of the network. But then we give back a little bit of the savings inside the home or inside the premise because uh, you know, we have the fiber termination equipment that tends to be add more you know, active components in the copper equipment. So then we end up getting almost 60 percent savings in dispatches. Huge gain for us. You know, third one is energy. I know a lot of folks are going to talk about that today. We've seen it, 60%. We've actually put meters, we've tested the bills before and after. Now, you know, you don't get the 80 to 90% in our case, primarily because we have a lot of fiber equipment. 
But if you take all the subs, look at the fibers, we have a phenomenal amount of fiber that does the continuous stuff labor. But again, it's 60% of savings that we can see from day one. The day we shut it down, we stop like the company. Maintenance. You know, we have fewer network elements. It's a simpler network. And as a result of that, we have you know, less just maintenance on the network. You know, you have less call outs, you have less maintenance agreements, uh, you, know, you have less trouble problems with it. So then, then it's, it, you save 60%. And the last one is new revenue. You know, when you do these business cases, almost 60% comes from new revenue because folks that didn't have fiber before, now we have fiber. So they go and say, geez, you know, the dial-up is not that hot anymore. Maybe I go and get, uh, you know, 100 meg or 75 meg connection. We see a fair amount of folks who use this opportunity to get uh, better services. So look, this place for itself. You know, we moved the time and again in this place for itself. Now, look, the playbacks, you know, these are, this is not playback in one year, these are pretty sustained playback, but it does pay for itself, especially in an environment like this. I mean, this is the mother of all projects. I mean, trying to shut down the last I'll talk a little bit about that. You know, there's a couple of lessons we've learned. Again, this is not, uh, we probably have 10 more lessons as we uh, go on you know, to the next phase of this. The first one is data. Data integrity. Uh, a lot of the records, probably Alexander Graham by himself wrote. I mean, the network's you know, almost 100 years old, so we have a lot of old records in the network. Uh, we have to start cleaning those way ahead of migration. Six months, eight months, 12 months ahead of migration is when we got to start cleaning them up. And we find some crazy things. I, uh, there's a whole story over here on what type of things we find in those records. We had people back 40, 50 years ago. You know, more to remote monitoring, so they put a line to the house so they can monitor the network at night so they don't have to get called out. So there's some pretty great stories on, as you dig into the records. The second is migration notices. They vary very widely. Like a customer, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, for our enterprise customers, it has to be three, six, nine months. For wholesale customers, we have to go a year because there's a lot of dependency on that. Because they have CP in the network. They have other carrier equipment that we integrate with us. So the amount of lead time, and we start planning a year before uh, at the central office goes live. A full year before we start the work of, you know, of reaching out to these guys. Third one is you know, workarounds for DSEO services. Uh, you know, these are 64 kbps channels uh, that were built for the copper world. They just don't float well with the you know, fiber environment. And you know, the fiber can do a couple of terabits and trying to push 64 kbps with a DDM hand up. I mean, it's like feeding the cow from the back. You know, it just doesn't work. It doesn't match that well. Uh, but look, we, but more importantly, look, we are committed to supporting the wholesalers, you know, wholesale community. So we'll continue the DDM handoffs. We'll continue doing that. Uh, I think that's one of the difference between our and a lot of our peers and how we migrate is we will continue supporting the legacy services. It comes at a cost to us, it comes at an efficiency, but that's a responsibility. From a regulatory perspective, and what we also own, although our uh, wholesale and our enterprise partners is going to support that. You know, also we need to find reasonable product substitutes for our customers. So for example, we have folks who back in the day bought a one meg DSL price guarantee for life product. Jeez, now, I cannot give you a one meg service, but Will you be happy taking the 5 meg service? No, I want my 1 meg service. And can I give you a 4 meg? No, I want my 1 meg service. So there's just a lot of work. You've got to work with the customers to see what's acceptable to them. You know, and the last one is you know, a segment-based uh, migration process. Oh, geez, that sounds consulting. No, it's not. All it says is, break up your big account, put account management on them, and migrate them. Look, for our customers, we can do it through you know, a call center and a regular approach. But you know, some of our special segments, basically the enterprise and government, requires some very, very special treatment. Three big issues we deal with in this. The first is scalable migrations. Right now, to migrate a customer, I need to do 12 patches before my control happens. So a letter, a registered letter, Postcard, a donor, another donor, a call, telepathy, seance. I don't we do every single way to reach out to the customers. We have to scale that process. And you know, we want a situation where the customers come to us and say, hey guys, listen, here, take my offer, let's migrate it. We are getting there, but look, we have to do the more important thing is we have to handle the customer too. See a lot of them are you know elderly people who still have cost line and you know we have to continue that uh, handholding support to migrate them. 
kind of an entry atmosphere to uphold the companies with Kola as opposed to trying to push the product. Second is engineering in plan, go all the engineers out there. I mean, this is one of the coolest projects I've ever worked on. Uh, we are literally creating the central office of the future here. So it's not a chart, it's not a diagram, it's actually real life. How do you take 8,000, 9,000 square feet and put it into 7, 8,000 square feet? How do you restack the equipment? How do you do power? I mean, you're working to develop a pretty cool visualization tool that takes a central office, puts where the equipment, so the different engineering teams don't have to make 300 site visits. They can actually play in real time to see where the equipment goes. Switch collapse. You know, I have used a lot of jet brand equipment to switch. Uh, I have to do switch collapse. Always have that one last line. I have a switch right now that I'm decommissioned. I have one line. After two months, I figured it was an own internal revised line. I think that could be the most difficult line to take off, but you know, we figured that one out. But it's how to do that. Tools. We don't even have tools and methods to do these type of uh, large central office collapses. You know, for example, when you migrate subs, so you, you know, they're, they're the rack upstairs, but take them to the rack downstairs, how do you do an automated cut over? Because when you're doing one circuit, two circuits, three circuits, that yeah, we'll figure it out, you know. Uh, chewing gum always helps, right? We, we figure find a way out. But when you scale this up to 200, 300,000 migrations, you can't find a more automated way of doing it. They're still learning how to do that. And, you know, things like power, for example, there's a time when you have all your legacy equipment, you bring all your fiber equipment, so for maybe a period of 12 months, you are running double. So the question is, gee, you go and upgrade the power completely? But you only need that for 12 months, after that you don't need that. Yes, code suggests you need the power for 12 months. So the question is, we try and do this in winter, you know, when cooling is less limited, or we bring an external power solutions to manage. So this is, uh, you know, a, a kind of a project manager's dream. You know, the last one is around legacy products, you know. When I got into this, I thought DS0 is a DS0. There are 100 different products under DS0. And each one require TLC to migrate. And they're completely different from each other. You can't even, for example, we have old metallic points, you know, railroad crossings that rely on our network to do it. And when you go there, they're in the middle of literally nowhere. How do you put a fiber connection? There is no power there. How do you manage to get, you know, power to put the fiber? So it's day to day management intricacies around legacy products and around scalability. So you know, at Verizon, we pride ourselves on some of the finest project managers in the world and you know, put them to this. You know, the, the product roadmap, I spoke a little bit, look, some of them are pretty obvious. You know, like quartz line, yeah, we give you some fiber, all the happy place. HSI, which is you know, our code name for DSL. You know, we give you files, internet, it actually works for the most part. You know, PSNU, which is uh, you know, data, 64 kbps circuits. We found a way to do, you know, 64 kbps on cheap on. It works. DS1 is big buddy for us. I think we are one of the first carriers in the world back to do DS1 on cheap on, where we serve, you know, give you a TDM handoff. It's a GS1 that runs on a cheap on network. So we able to get phenomenal scale from the back end and from the network. But there are some areas we are working through right now. Centrex and DS0 are the set of big ones. Uh, you know, but we still have continue giving the TDM handoff, so the centers and DS0s we are working. We have solutions today, but they need to be cost effective. Because if I'm going to get $50,000 a month revenue, I can't put a $50,000, $60,000 box at the end to make that work. So I think that's the big piece as a team we are trying to find our way through. Look, lastly, why now? I mean, this copper network has been on for 100 years. No one's complaining. It works fine. Look, the core revenues are declining. You all know that. Our copper revenue continues to decline 8 10 percent every year. And it's a fixed cost. You know, the power, the property, the property tax. It's a fixed cost. When you have one line there, you need to have all the equipment in place there. So we tend to have very, very high fixed cost of the copper network. So this is, we are eliminating the whole copper network and taking out a huge amount of fixed cost. You know, new sources of revenue, you know, when we build the ocean of BIOS, 20 million home network. Uh, we didn't think that many small businesses as we would have liked to. So we're going back, closing those out, continuing to build. But the SME market is growing, it's growing 8%. The last one, it unlocks the value of our real estate assets. You know, we have, as I said, 50 million square feet just in our central offices. So we're able to unlock that asset and you know, do other things with it, use it for offices, you know, lease it out. Uh, you know, put new equipment, develop some data centers, so really unlock some really large real estate. 
Here the last one is around providing healthy returns. Uh, this has not been done before because between the financial case, between the engineering complexity, between the regulatory issues, no one has been able to thread that needle fully. We've done it for the first time. Now, we've got to scale the process, and many of you will be involved in that scaling, but you know, we will have to find a way to get around this because the copper network today does not serve the needs of our customers. You know, where it does, it's a reliable network for where it does, but increasingly that network is coming under pressure. So, this is our way of you know, truly transforming the network. Uh, thanks for the time.